Dr. Mark here. In this video, taken during my 2020 Boundary Waters canoe trip, I take a tour of the forest back of one of our camps. As I walk, I talk about how a book I'm reading has affected me. This book is a Sand County Almanac by Aldo Leopold. Another morning in the Boundary Waters, this time in the woods back of our camp. I've been waking up the past couple mornings right at the crack of dawn and listening to the birds as they start to sing. And there is definitely an order to how they start. The nuthatches are some of the very first to start. And there's one that has a nest not too far from the, the uh, tent. And another one, probably 20 yards away. And they proudly proclaim their territories every morning at about 5 o'clock in the morning. And then the other birds start. And there are probably 20 or 30 species of birds that start singing and telling everybody that they are the king of their particular branch. Now this has kind of come home to me as I've been reading uh, the book that I decided to bring along this time. It's a Sand County Almanac written by Aldo Leopold, who was an ecologist and natural history professor at University of Wisconsin for many years. I have read the last chapter of this book many times because I have taught environmental ethics and actually I uh, have come to believe many of the kinds of things that uh, he has and going through and reading Sand County Almanac I believe that we have, would have been very good friends had we been born at the same time, or close to the same time, and in the same place. Uh, we both had a rural upbringing, and uh, we both went to state universities for our graduate school, and we both chose the same profession, ecology, natural history, natural resources teaching. Uh, but uh, the the uh, the rest of the book, going back to the book, I've never read, and it's a shame because it's a beautiful book. He he has a wonderful way with words, and he well, the reason that he and I would have been really good friends is that both of us notice everything, the smells, the sights, the sounds and we put things together and try to interpret things. For instance, as you walk along the path here, not too much different from any other path, but as you walk along the path and start up the hill here, you start to see all sorts of spruce cone scales, or fir cone scales, whatever they happen to be. They are from cones from trees. They don't just fall off the cones, these scales. They're taken off by red squirrels. So we knew when we saw these cone scales along the path that there had to be red squirrels here. Now that's uh, one of the kinds of things <clears throat> that we see. Oh, by the way, you've probably got a good picture of John there. John is our friend. We seem to see him at every campsite. We've been able to see a number of different things this particular trip that we haven't seen before or that we haven't noticed. Uh, 
the campsite that we are staying at. We have made our temporary home. It is actually the home to a family of geese. Uh, they must have really made themselves at home at this campsite and it must be one that many other campers don't even see because it's it was uh, way back in the woods. Uh, it kind of looked like a portage trail going up the hill except there were no rocks at the portage. Uh, it was just a kind of a gravelly uh, uh, landing for the canoe. Um, and we had to go up the hill before we could even find the fire grate and everything else. So we, we saw a family of geese, probably four or five goslings, as they waddled off into the woods when we came and took over their home. But over the last couple of days, we have seen the biggest beaver I have ever seen, probably 60 pounds, on shore. And it kind of waddled along. In fact, we thought at first that it was a, a uh, bear cub. And then it, as, we, as it uh, waddled along, we noticed that it wasn't moving like a bear. It was moving like a beaver on land. And uh, finally it plopped into the water and disappeared. And we've seen that beaver two or three other times swimming across our end of the bay. Uh, I have seen salamanders in the water, something that is not all that common, but I'm sure they are out here. Uh, I've seen a ruffed grouse, and maybe we can even find her again. It, she, instead of flushing, like grouse often do, she walked away clucking and making noise. So I'm sure that she was trying to keep us away from her nest. Uh, I saw an eagle pluck a fish out of the water. Um, there, there are a number of other kinds of things that well, you don't see every day. The, you do see things here if you notice them. So let's take a trip down here and see what we can see. Dewberry covers this forest floor here. If you don't know what dewberry is, it has leaves like this. And in starting in July and maybe August, you'll find small raspberry like fruits on them. Uh, they are small and there are not many of them, so. Uh, you have to take a while to collect them. <coughs> and here's something neat right here. This three-leaved plant right here is a nodding trillium. There's the trillium flower down there underneath the leaves. Again, something you wouldn't notice unless you're used to noticing things. Bunch berries are also very common around here. Um, I just passed a bunch berry flower. Let's go back and take a look. This, this one right here is closely related to the um, flowering dogwood. You might kind of recognize it from that. And it's also related to the, the uh, uh, red osier that I showed you a little bit earlier. We also have star flowers here. I'll see if I can find a nice one. That one was kind of eaten up. Here's one. Usually seven petals. You don't find star flowers, or you don't find many flowers 
with seven petals like this and a whirl of leaves and something that I think is kind of neat here. This is a, a swampy marshy area and it also has a lot of these things. This is a Lycopodium. Lycopodium complanatum. Kind of looks like a little Christmas tree. Uh, here's one, here's a bunch of them. Down here. Usually when you find one, you'll find lots of them because they're all clones of each other. And it's a very large underground root system. They uh, are a very ancient group of plants. They, they and, and uh, relatives of the horsetails 300 million years ago were 60 to 70 feet high. Uh, growing in cool swampy areas that ringed the giant continent of Pangaea and virtually all of the coal that we're mining now came from those really tall tree-like non-flowering plants. Well it looks like Mama Grouse is not here. She. I don't know whether she was protecting a nest or whether she was protecting her brood as she was walking away. Must have been her brood. Because we passed the area where my brother and I saw her yesterday. But this is the kind of thing that you can do just about anywhere. You can walk along in the woods and as long as you keep your eyes and ears open, and your nose too, you can experience many, many different things. Mother Nature has lots of things to teach you. One thing that I believe one thing I believe very strongly is that everything else was not put on the earth for our use. Instead, we were put on the earth to protect everything else. And Aldo Leopold believed that too. I want to leave you this morning with that thought. Please leave your comments below, and if you like what I do, please subscribe.